Hello everyone, welcome to this fun little video on swatching. Swatching is one of those things that not everyone loves to do and I can kind of see why. It's If you're excited to cast on for a new project, it's the thing you have to do before you get to the fun new cast on. And honestly, for years, I wasn't a big fan of swatching and also then when I did, I used to swatch and then not get the same gauge and it wasn't really giving me the results that I wanted and it kind of felt like a waste of time. Um, it wasn't until I realised that I was actually swatching wrong um, that that really opened it up for me and now I really enjoy swatching and it's a great way to know exactly the outcome you're going to be getting from a project. So I thought we'd do this one little video just to talk about the best way to get the most out of your swatch and how to avoid any of those mistakes that you can fall into when you're swatching. So let's take a look. So first, why is swatching important? Well, the first thing is, is to find out gauge and your gauge will let you know exactly what fit you're gonna get, um, which is super important. You don't wanna spend all that time knitting your new thing only for it to not fit at the end. So working out your gauge in the first place and making sure you know exactly what the measurements are gonna be is going to let you know exactly how your garment is going to fit and then it won't be a waste of time knitting it and having something that doesn't fit you at the end. Knitting a swatch will also let us know the feel of what our garment is going to be like so it's all about the fabric you're going to know what kind of feel you're going to have um, whether or not that gauge is going to work for you and it's all about the kind of fabric you're going to end up with and you'll be able to see that right on your swatch as opposed to at the end so if it's something that you don't really like the feel of you're going to know that from the swatch and you can swatch again until you get a fabric that you're really happy with. And thirdly, your swatch is going to be able to tell you what kind of look you're going to get with your finished fabric. So yarn looks very different in the skein than it does knit up. You're going to be able to see what the stitch pattern looks like, if you've got enough stitch definition, if that particular yarn works for those cables that you like in this pattern that you want to knit. Um, it's going to show you all of that because not all yarns will work for all stitch patterns. Um, so it's a really good thing to see that on a swatch as opposed to your final piece after you've blocked it. What size to knit your swatch is one of those things that I know a lot of us, myself included, will tend to try and go on the smaller side just because again you want to get to that project. Um, but bigger really is better here for a couple of different reasons. For one, the stitches on the outside of your swatch tend to be a lot more uneven than in the centre. So when you're taking your gauge measurements, you want to be able to take it from those centre stitches and not just measuring across the entire swatch because that'll give you an accurate result and then your fit might be off later. Um, this is something I used to do all the time where I knit my gauge swatch and then I knit my lovely thing and then I block it out and have a completely different gauge to what was on my swatch which not only is super frustrating but it means it was a waste of time to knit the swatch so if you can go bigger you will get much more accurate results when it comes to calculating your gauge. Another reason to go bigger is that we need to give ourselves time to get into our flow of knitting uh, and what that means is sometimes we need to relax into our knitting to keep an even tension. I know I'm definitely um, someone whose gauge and tension is affected by what they're doing in the moment. If I'm trying to rush through something and get something done really quickly, like a really quick um, gauge swatch, then my knitting can tend to be a bit tighter than what it would be if I'm sat watching something on Netflix and just relaxing, which I will be with my final project. So again, if you're kind of rushing through it and doing like a small gauge swatch, then you might get strange results for your gauge compared to what you would be doing when you finish your actual project. So knitting a bigger swatch and just relaxing into those stitches will give you accurate results and it kind of mimics what you would normally be doing when you're actually relaxing and knitting your lovely thing that you're gonna be casting on really soon after your gauge swatch. Also, if there is a stitch pattern that you're knitting, you want to give yourself plenty of room to do a couple of repeats. Because again, if you want to check what that yarn looks like in that stitch pattern, it's really hard to tell um, just from like a couple of inches. You need to get a couple of stitch pattern repeats in to be able to see what it looks like, if it's going to work in that yarn. 
Now this is particularly true when it comes to lace knitting. I'm not a huge lace knitter, but I know that you kind of need to give lace the space to grow because it does open up when it comes to blocking and you want to see how those repeats are looking and and yeah that will really affect your gauge as well so I know it can be tempting um, when you're knitting a swatch to go smaller because if you're worrying about running out of yarn if you only have a certain amount for your project I totally get that but remember you can always unravel your swatch um, just remember if you're working in the round and you've got the floats at the back don't cut those if you're worried about running out of yarn because then it's really hard to well you can't really use a swatch then after that unless you're going to do a little bit of yarn surgery so always remember you can reuse your swatch so don't worry about it too much about running out of yarn so my next tip is to only knit the stitch pattern that you want to work the gauge out for which might seem a bit of a redundant tip but a lot of the time you see people knitting swatches with especially it's for stockinette with a garter border around the outside um, I used to do this all the time it's the one thing that really threw my gauge out um, and I know exactly why we do it it's to keep that swatch flat because stockinette rolls up so if you knit a garter, garter border around the outside it'll help to keep that swatch flat so then when you block it out it's easier to take measurements from um, the only problem is garter stitch has an extremely different gauge to stockinette so if you kind of have this garter border around your stockinette it's kind of going to throw off the stitches a little especially if you're not doing a very large swatch so that's another tip just to keep your eye on because if you do a swatch with a garter on and it throws off your gauge then it's going to be different when it comes to doing your final garment so that's just something to keep an eye on because that's a very common thing to do and I did it until not that long ago and I saw way better results with my accuracy and gauge when I swapped out just doing a plain gauge swatch with no garter around the outside so Maybe if you're having a few issues with your gauge swatch not matching up to the gauge on your garment, give that a try if that's something that you've been doing in the past because it might make a big difference. So now we're going to block the swatch. Um, but I have one tip here before you even get it near the water and that is to measure your swatch when it's dry and unblocked. Um, check your gauge as it is right now uh, we'll talk about why in a moment but just make a quick note of it somewhere and, um, and we'll refer back to it in a moment so once you've done that we're gonna actually soak the swatch and um, the key here is you want to treat your swatch when you're blocking it the exact same way as you would your final object so if you know you normally use a certain wool wash um, definitely use that on your swatch you're gonna want to do the same thing um, because the way you're going to get the most accurate results is you treat your swatch in the same way as you're going to treat your FO. So first things first is soak your swatch, use any wool wash you do or if you just use plain water then do that um, and you're going to submerge it into some water and gently squeeze out any air bubbles that get trapped in there because you want all your stitches to be really saturated with water and then leave it to soak for at least an hour but you can leave it as long as you like really um, I sometimes completely forget that they're in there and they're soaking and I find them the next day so as long as it's completely saturated you are fine um, so that is the first step to get it really nice and wet the next thing you're going to want to do is remove any excess water so gently squeeze it out just between your hands but making sure not to wring it or stretch it or anything just gently and then I like to lay it between two towels and then roll it up and then just add a little bit of pressure um, just to remove as much water as I can before it goes onto the blocking mat. So now you have a decision to make and that's whether or not to pin your swatch or not. Um, I know most of the advice says to soak it and then pin it out um, but remember we want to treat our swatch in the same way we're going to treat 
a finished object. So have a think about how you normally wash your garments. Um, for me, it really depends on the project. So if I've got a mainly stock net sweater, I like to knit a lot of vanilla sweaters um, or something with quite a simple stitch pattern in. And most of the time, if I block or wash a sweater, I'll just soak it and then I'll lay it to dry flat. Um, so if this is what you're going to be doing with your final object, then do that with your swatch. So if I know I'm going to be um, just laying a sweater to dry flat and I won't be pinning it out, then that's what I'll do in my swatch. If I'm knitting something a little bit more intricate, that like with my petiole that's got lace and I know I'm going to want to open that lace up a little bit and I'm going to be pinning it in places, then I'll do the same thing with my swatch. Um, treat it on a project to project basis and if you treat your swatch in the exact same way as you're going to treat your final object, then your swatch is going to be a lot more accurate when it comes to the gauge and the fabric feel and all those lovely things. It's going to tell you exactly how your sweater is going to turn out. So yeah, next time you're swatching, don't just go for the pins every time. Have a think about what you're going to be doing with that final object and then treat your swatch accordingly, if that makes sense. And now possibly the biggest tip in all of this, um, and that's what not to do when pinning, if you do pin your swatch, please never stretch your swatch to match a gauge because it's just giving you really unrealistic results. Um, if you're going to be pulling and tugging at your swatch to match the recommended gauge that you see in a pattern, then not only is it not going to be accurate, but it's never going to transfer over to the final object. Even if you aggressively block out, I mean, sometimes it it can work if you do aggressively block. But remember that, especially if you're working with natural fabrics, um, natural fibers, sorry, and you're using wool, wool has a lot of memory and it will spring back. So even if you're like aggressively blocking it out to get it to the measurements that you want it to do, over time it's just going to kind of keep coming in and it's never going to give you the fit you want. Um, also, it's probably not going to last as long because if you do keep pulling it out and every time you wash it you have to keep like manipulating it again into that shape that you want, then it's going to cause more wear on it and, and yeah, it's just so much better if you get the accurate gauge you want by doing the different swatches and getting the right needle size um, as opposed to pulling your swatch out to meet any kind of gauge that you're trying to get to. Um, which I know again sometimes when you knit a swatch you're kind of like oh I'm so close if I just keep nudging it this way and that. If it's just minimal things it, it can be fine and that's completely up to you in the moment. Um, but most of the time it kind of is going to serve you well to take a little bit more time and knit another swatch um, swapping your needle sizes out or trying like a different needle um, material like swapping from wood to metal or whatever um, just to get those results um, I know it's a pain sometimes but the results will be worth it and then you won't have spent all that time knitting a sweater only to find it just doesn't fit you how you wanted it to. So finally let's talk about when to take our gauge measurements. Um, don't take your measurements while your gauge swatch is still on the blocking mat, especially if you've got it all pinned out. Um, make sure it's 100% dry and take all the pins out and let it be nice and relaxed. I like to um, pick it up and shake it around a little bit and then lay it back down um, because your stitches are gonna maybe want to contract a little bit if they have been pinned so taking your measurements when it you know it's completely kind of like been shaken around a little bit you know you're gonna get the most accurate results um, now you remember I told you to take measurements before you washed it too and you're probably wondering why I got you to do that as well if you're going to take the measurements after as well um, and that's because no matter how accurate you are no matter how you treat your swatch sometimes your gauge will shift when you're knitting your main project um, 
sometimes it's just inevitable and I find it really handy to make sure I'm keeping track of how my gauge is going to know what that measurement was before I blocked it because that's what it should be when you're knitting so if I, my gauge has kind of gone off kilter a little um, I'll know because of that original measurement if I'm comparing it to my blocked out gauge measurements then I'm not really gonna know I'm kind of knitting blind a little bit so it's really good to have those two separate measurements then as you're knitting the final project you can refer back to it and check it along the way to make sure you're keeping on gauge and then if you're not it won't be some big surprise at the end after you get off the blocking mat you'll be able to adjust as you go along if you need to um, rip back anything if you knit it a little bit too tight or make any adjustments you need to make so that's it i hope you've liked this little video on um on swatching and if it's not been your favorite thing before maybe you'll feel a little bit more confident to tackle a swatch now or at least a little bit more motivated to give it a go um, if you've got any other tips you'd like to share with me please leave them in the comments below and I hope this helps you if you've not had a lot of success swatching in the past um, it's been lovely to speak to you today and tune in again for other tips and tricks and for our podcast that we do on a monthly a bi-monthly basis um, hit like if you've enjoyed this video and you find it helpful and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video okay see you again bye Thank you.